Giants fans, what is going on? You are watching New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I am Marshall Green, and with game day around the corner, I got a little deal for you guys. Go down in the comments and predict the score for me. And if you get it right, you got to choose the winner and the correct score. I will personally Venmo you $25. No shysters, no fugazis, no editing comments. We got my boy Mini Coop, my producer. He's watching the comments. We'll make sure nothing crazy goes on. So don't edit your comments. But remember, get down in the comments, predict the score. And if you get it right, I will Venmo you $25 personally. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am Marshall Green, and in today's video, we are going to go, go through a preview of this Sunday's game versus the Atlanta Falcons. But first, I want to touch on the unfortunate news that came out of Giants practice today surrounding Nick Gates. He obviously left last week's game Thursday night against the Washington football with a broken tibia and fibia. And then on a Friday morning, he had surgery, and there was videos that went around where he was walking through the... Uh, through the hospital with kind of like a walker and you thought everything was okay and then this news came out nick gates is still down in a hospital in virginia has some more procedures in his future joe judge couldn't completely rule out that it would be a career ending injury but it see he did seem hopeful that it wasn't going to be the case we're hoping that nick gates can get better from this and return to being a new york giant there was some rumblings that this was similar to the alex smith injury so everybody show nick gates some love like this video and let's hope that he can come back and be the same player that he was nick gates agent he put out a quote and he said this Mark my word, Nick will be back in blue next year. While in some cases, these types of injuries can be career-threatening, Nick's situation is not that. It doesn't hurt that he is the toughest guy on the planet. And I believe that. I believe Nick Gates will be back next year sporting number 65 for the New York Giants. And I hope that he gets better as soon as possible. But game week, Nick Gates unfortunately will not be there a captain for this New York Giants team. And this is a must-win matchup for the New York Giants. The Giants, they are ending up entering this matchup 0-2. So are the new, the Atlanta Falcons. They are entering 0-2. And both teams will be playing like their season is on the line because they are. The Giants, they are entering this game three-point favorites. The total over-under is 47.5 points. I expect the Giants not only to cover, but win this game. And later in the video, I will give you my prediction. But first, I want to share with you guys my five keys to victory for the New York Giants. If the Giants do these things, they will win the game. First on the list, you have to finish drives. Last week, the Giants, they left just way too many points on the board. They kicked five field goals in enemy territory. And when you get in enemy territory, you cannot settle for field goals. Five field goals, plain and simple, you are not going to win many games when you kick that many field goals. That is way too many points left on the board. Simple as this. Good teams don't settle for field goals. It seems like this Giants offense is content with sometimes just kicking field goals and not taking shots at the end zone. I want to see this team be better when they enter enemy territory. And I think one way they can do that, and one thing we'll see this week, is getting Kenny Galladay involved early, and they need to target Galladay when they enter enemy territory. And when they get in the red zone, like I think they will be, do so and be there often this week against the Falcons, you need to target Kenny Galladay. The big 6'4", six, 6'5", six, receiver, he's a big body. He can catch every single pass. He is a contested catch machine. He did have some drops last week against the Washington football team. The sideline dispute with Jason Garrett went viral. Everyone's talking about it, but I think Galladay will be the X factor for the New York Giants passing game. Before I get into my next four keys to victory, I want to know what you guys have to say. Let me know. Get down in the comments. What are your keys to victory? Go down in the comments and let me know. I put up a community post earlier on the page, on the YouTube page this week, and I asked Giants fans to give me their keys to victory, and these are the answers that I got. From Bill M., defense needs to actually show up this time. No pass rush. We can't cover just pathetic. I think the Giants pass rush is going to be better than it was last week against Washington when they forced just three quarterback pressures. So I expect them to be much better than they were last week. Mike Curtis, he said this, score, open it up, please. Enough is enough. Play Giants football. 
Go Giants. I agree, Mike. I think this Giants offense is going to open it up more than ever, and I think Daniel Jones is going to take some shots down the field. Flag spin. They said get off the field on third down. I agree with that. Matt Ryan, he is still one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL when you don't put pressure on him. So I expect the Giants to do so and get off the field on third down. And my guy, Tutu Azuri, I think I'm saying that wrong. He said, ciao, my Giants paciente, which means family. What's up, my Giants family? Thanks for commenting. You're always down in the comments. I appreciate you, my brother. And then Rosario Guzzo, he said this, play defense. This Giants defense has not been as good as advertised, and they were they have not been the unit that they were last year, and I think that that's going to change this week. I think this Giants defense is going to return to form that they showed in the 2020 NFL season. And if you guys want to talk more New York Giants football and possibly be featured on the show, because the next 10 Twitter followers that I get, I am going to shout you out on the show just like I did with those guys that hit me up on the community post. So hit me up on Twitter. It's right there. Follow me at Marshall Green underscore and send me a DM so I know that you came from this video. Key number two, if the Giants want to win, put pressure on Matt Ryan, the former MVP. This guy is still a good quarterback, but when you put pressure on him and you make him flustered and get off his spot, he is not the same guy that he once was. And that's what the Eagles did in week one when they routed the Atlanta Falcons. In week one, Matt Ryan, 21 for 35, 164 yards, zero TDs, zero INTs. The, the Eagles, they did force 16 QB pressures on Matt Ryan in week one, and they were able to sack him three times, which I think played a pivotal role in why the Eagles were able to be so successful against Matt Ryan. In week two against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ryan, his stats look better, but those were they weren't really all that impressive to me still. Just like the Eagles, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they forced 16 pressures on Matt Ryan, and that's why he turned the ball over three times. Get pressure on Matt Ryan, and he will make mistakes. He's not an athletic guy, and he will take the underneath route. So I want the Giants to play more press man coverage than they have uh, in the previous two games, kind of playing that off-soft coverage. I expect that to change this week because Matt Ryan is known for being a check-down artist in the latter part of his careers. But these guys on screen, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Aziz Ojulari, Lorenzo Carter, and O'Shane Zimenez, they need to play much better than they have this season. Leonard Williams, eight total pressures, zero sacks. He's left a couple sacks on the field. In week one and week two, he had a couple plays that he didn't finish and that he should finish because he is that good of a playmaker. Dexter Lawrence, he has five total pressures so far. I like what he does. He can, he can, he can create pressure from the inside of the pocket and force quarterbacks to roll out, which Matt Ryan is not very good at. Aziz Ojulari, he's looked great through two weeks. Two weeks, Two sacks, six pressures. I expect Ojolari to be a difference maker once again this week. And then Lorenzo Carter, a guy last year that played really well and was starting to come around, and then he had that heartbreaking Achilles injury. Five pressures from him on the season, zero sacks. I want Lorenzo Carter to make a game-changing play this year. And then O'Shane Zimenez, a guy that I was questionably going to leave off this list, but I still have, I still have high hopes for the X-Man. Two pressures. Through two games so far, zero snaps. He's played 62 snaps in two weeks, 33 snaps last week. So his, his play and his ability to get on the field is improving. And I expect these five guys to be difference makers against the Falcons this week. Guys, I got a call from Dave Gettleman, and he told me, if you want the Giants win to win this week against the Atlanta Falcons, you got to subscribe. We subscribe and we sub for Giants Dubs. But seriously, seriously, guys, if you want to stay up to date on everything surrounding the New York Giants, from news, rumors, injury reports, game previews, game recaps, and all sorts of fun stuff that we got cooking up over here at Giants Now, go down and hit that big red button. The Giants Thursday injury report, injury report was recently released, and these were the guys that were featured on it. Saquon Barkley, he's still, he was limited so far through practice this week, just kind of a precautionary measure. He's dealing still with that knee injury. It's finally been a year for him from when he tore that, uh, tore that ACL in week two of the NFL season. Last year, Evan Ingram, a guy that I have circled 
on, for this game against the Atlanta Falcons. I think he is going to be back for his first action of the 2021 NFL season. He practiced yesterday and he practiced today and rumblings are saying he looked really, really good. Kenny Galladay, a hip injury, something that a lot of people have not been talked about. He was listed as a limited participant despite doing very little in the open portion of practice. I expect Galladay to play, and the thing is, this isn't the same uh, hip injury that he was dealing with last year, so I expect him to play. Logan Ryan, he's dealing with a hammy. I expect him to play, and Caden Smith, he is dealing with a knee. I also expect him to play. Cameron Brown, Cam Brown, the second-year player, the linebacker. He has not played yet this season for the New York Giants. He's dealing with that hamstring injury. I don't expect him to play this week. Nate Ebner, the special team specialist, is dealing with the quad. I think he'll be out there. Austin Johnson, a guy the Giants need out there. He has been a disruptor all season for them. He's dealing with the illness. Did practice more today than he did yesterday. I expect him to be out there. And then an interesting development around Kadarius Toney, an ankle injury, something that popped up. The media said he looked like he was he was ailing a little bit from that ankle yesterday. Pla practiced a little bit, but was limited. I expect him to play, and I think this might be the week we could see more Kadarius Tony touches. Key number three, if the Giants want to win, get Saquon going early. That's why I'm wearing this jersey, fellas. I think this is the week for 26. This is the week he's going to bounce back after 10 off days in between week one and week two. This is the week I think he's going to explode. Let's look now at his week one performance and what he's put on through the first two weeks. Week one, 10 carries, 2.6 yards per pop, only 26 yards, five, uh, a long run of five yards. He did have one catch, and he played 29 snaps, which was 48% of the snaps in week one. Whereas in week two, that number almost doubled. He had 13 carries, two catches, played in 58 snaps, in, which was 84% of the offensive snaps. As you can see on screen, 13 carries, 4.3 yards a touch, 57 yards on the ground, and he did have that long run of 41 yards where he showed that he still had the juice in his legs and looked like the Saquon of old. But guys, I'm excited because I believe this is the week that Saquon Barkley will be back and will play the majority of the snaps and get the majority of the touches. There's been 10 days since the Giants last played in their last game, and I think this is the week Saquon Barkley will return and show why he was the number two overall draft pick. Key number four, you've got to win the turnover battle. Matt Ryan, if you put pressure on him, he will cop the football up. He will make questionable decisions. But when you have to win the turnover battle, it's not just because of defense. Daniel Jones, he needs to protect the football. He was much better at that in week two against the Washington football team, and I expect that to continue. If DJ protects the football and plays turnover free, the Giants, they will win this football game, and I guarantee it. The Giants and Falcons, they are about the same level of talent. The Giants, I think, have more potential than the Falcons, but if DJ plays clean, they will win this game. You can book it. This defense, they need to capitalize on opportunities when they arise. Matt Ryan, he will turn it over. He threw three interceptions last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I expect this Giants secondary to capitalize on those possessions when he makes an errant throw, when he's off his spot in the pocket and has to make a throw out of a creation type of mode. Guys, Eli Manning, Everyone loves him. If you are a New York Giants fan, you have to love him. And this weekend against the Atlanta Falcons, he is having his number 10 retired, and he is entering the ring of honor. A huge accompl accomplishment for number 10. So go down and like this video, guys. Show Eli some love. And uh, while you're liking this video, get down in the comment section and answer this question for me. What is your favorite Eli Manning moment of all time? For me, it's the NFC Championship game against the 49ers where he was beat up and just got hit 20 plus times and delivered time and time again. That's my favorite Eli Manning moment, but let me know, get down in the comments and type yours. Key number five, if the Giants want to win this game, play like your season is on the line because it is. If you start this season 0-3, you might as well start watching watching tape of college players and scouting for the NFL draft. It is tough if you go 0-3 and make the playoffs. Only one team since 2009, the 2018 Texans, have gone 0-3 and made the playoffs. This is a win or go home game for the New York Giants. It's that simple. If you want to be able to compete in the NFC East, you have to win this game. You can't fall much further in the standings than you already have. You need to be the aggressor. 
Play to win. Don't play to lose like you did last week against the Washington football team where James Bradbury caught the interception with two minutes left in the game and then you ran the ball twice and threw a quick slant to Sterling Shepard that even if he caught it would have been short of the sticks. Be the aggressor, play to, play to win, and don't play not to lose. My final score prediction, I have the Giants finally kidding in the win column. Give me the Giants 27, Falcons 20. I think this is the game where Daniel Jones plays well again, but also where our guy Saquon Barkley finally returns to being the best running back in the NFL.